The last Bayesian alternative to t-tests is the paired samples t-test or the Bayesian alternative of that. So let's start with the parameter of interest. It is the population effect size, it is called delta, but the way we calculate it is different. It is the mean of a or of different scores. So why are we talking about different scores and not about mean of these raw, raw scores? Well, this is because we uh, pair sample t test is the t test in which we've got a group of participants that goes through two conditions. So the the measurements in in the conditions are not different groups, but the same participants that go through both conditions. So, um, what we can do that we can't in the independent sample t test is because we've these uh, the the two uh, measurements provided by each participant, they are connected, but we don't have that connection in the independent sample t test. So what we can do is to obtain a difference score. So we do the uh, measurement we obtain in condition one, in participant one, minus the measurement we obtain in condition two, uh, in the same participant. And then we obtain a different score for each of the participants, and now we've got one new sample of different scores. So instead of dealing with two samples, we just have one sample of different scores. And we can now uh, treat that as similar to a one-sample t-test. And we are com comparing with zero. So basically we want to know whether the, the, the mean the, of the population of different scores is different than zero. We use the effect size, so we are going to separate, uh, sorry, divide the mean of the different scores uh, divided by the standard deviation of different scores. So we, because we don't know the standard deviation or the mean in the population, we obtain the coins D in our sample with the mean of different scores in our sample divided by the standard deviation of different scores in our sample. Now, degrees of freedom is 1, as in the one sample t-test, and different than the independent sample t-test. Why? Because uh, when we created the different scores, we continue working with the different scores, and that is one sample. And that's why we are making one estimation, and therefore we only uh, reduce one degree of freedom. Okay, in terms of prior, priors, it is the same as in the independent sample t-test. The null model is uh, fixed. The, the delta is fixed uh, to zero. In the alternative model, we use a Cauchy distribution with a parameter of 0 0.707. And the likelihood is the same. It's a T uh, distribution with a delta of zero in the null model. And in uh, an alternative model, it's also a T distribution the parameter is delta, but we use all the possible values of delta, not just one as in the null model. And also we, we incorporate the, the degrees of freedom in the, we consider the degrees of freedom. This is the data of another fake data set of reaction time data set. We uh, pretend that we had two uh, conditions in a memory task, we have slow presentation of stimuli and fast presentation of stimuli. Participants went through both conditions, and we've got in the slow presentation of stimuli uh, condition. We, it's in green, represented by green in the graph, and the fast presentation is represented by orange. And we've got in the graph the connections, because these are paired samples of... of um, in which a participant produces two measurements. And so we can see in the box plot that the reaction time is um, a lower value in slow presentation, meaning that slow presentation people respond faster.
And so let's see the Bayesian analysis. And we've got the JASP output with the posterior and prior distribution over the effect size delta. As usual, the prior distribution is, is around zero because it's the Cauchy distribution. And then the, we've, we've got the posterior distribution that is a, a, it has a mean of minus 0 0.546 and a 95% confidence interval that goes from minus 0 0.880 to minus 0 0.218. Again, it's very clearly um, a lower than zero, and therefore it's a, a, a good evidence that the null hypothesis is wrong, and the alternative hypothesis that there are differences in and between conditions, it's correct. And the base factor shows that because it says that the marginal likelihood of the model of the alternative hypothesis is 41 times more a uh, higher than the marginal likelihood of the model of the null hypothesis. We can see that in the BF10, the base factor 10.